Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. It's August, very good weather, very good moon, so let's do Republican politics. For 2016, there are two men running for, three men running for a re-election in their individual states. Mr. Christie in New Jersey immediately in 13, and then Mr. Walker and Mr. Kasich in Wisconsin and Ohio. There are other players here, but we're looking at the Republican field right now. Larry Kudlow of Kudlow Reports, CNBC, and Kudlow Radio joins me. Larry, I understand you spent some time with Scott Walker of Wisconsin running for re-election. A strong candidate for the Republican nomination in 16 if he runs. Do you have a guess about whether he'll run after election? I have absolutely no, no doubt he will run. Absolutely no doubt. And he represents I've what? Talked, I've talked to him many times. I mean, we were, he was my guest host for an hour last night. And I, of course, asked him the question. And he said he couldn't deal with that until after right. 2014. But I've also talked to him at other times. And I also know that he has developed a tremendous fundraising base in Florida and Texas and other parts of the South. So I'm not saying that he's a favorite, but I'm saying there's no question in my mind. Remember, he won the first time, John, then he had to win a second time on a recall, and he actually got more votes on the recall. So this is his third time running. If you're a three-time governor of Wisconsin, which is, after all, Almost a blue state. I mean, right. it's certainly a purple state. That's pretty powerful stuff. I mentioned Scott Walker immediately because we're joined now by David Drucker of Washington Examiner. It's striking to me, good evening, David, that in the Rasmussen poll most recently held last week, Chris Christie tops the field running for re-election in New Jersey at 21, Marco Rubio at 18 from Florida, also Jeb Bush, former Florida governor, at 16, and uh, Rand Paul at 15, and Paul Ryan at 13. Scott Walker is not in this poll. David, good evening to you. Chris Christie leading the field. Does he see Scott Walker as a rival? Um, You could have a very strong top-tier field of governors and and possibly a couple of senators. You know, I'd note on the polling, at this early stage, where most people are not like us, they're not as dialed in, a lot of the polling will reflect name ID and, and who is in the news at any given time. Um, but I think that once we get past the 2014 midterm elections, you're going to see a lot of movement. Uh, and I, I, I fully expect to see uh, Walker run. I expect to see Christie run. Um, and, I, and I think it's going to be a very uh, wide open and in some cases unpredictable contest. Dave, are you surprised just on this poll that um, that Ryan was down at 13? No, and, and look at this, Larry. I mean, you've got people at 16, 15, 14, 13. I mean, oh. to me, this is just, it, it's all tied up. Right. And, it, you know, especially in polling, I mean, a percent one way or the other here or there really doesn't mean much. And actually, the fact that Ryan remains so high tells you that he really created a national presence for himself uh, through the, the, the campaign, and he didn't damage himself by being a part of a losing campaign. And this is something he didn't have before being a vice presidential nominee. He was known in Washington. He was known in Wisconsin in his district, and that was about it. So he has become a national figure. I mentioned that Mr. Christie also leads a New Hampshire poll. This is WMUR, UNH, and I agree with David, with you, David, that it's a popularity contest at this point. But let's press the Chris Christie case. This is a blue state, and he's running in 13, and he's running so far ahead of the field right now. Uh, this makes him an extremely attractive candidate to, to plan on. David, is he going to go out and, and, and campaign for everybody in 14. He'll be with Scott Walker. He'll be with everybody running in 14. I expect he's going to be, I, I believe he's going to be the head of the Republican Governors Association. And, and one thing Christie has that these other candidates don't is that he gets his reelection, which is basically a sure thing, over with this year in November. So he can spend 14 laying the groundwork, traveling the country. He'll do a lot on behalf of Republican governors. And that is going to be extremely valuable to him, both from a, you know, a a party standpoint, but also from a fundraising standpoint, and it's going to uh, mean that he will be a player on the national scene because he will be done taking care of 
state business from a political standpoint where for now he has to look over his shoulder a little bit because most of the people that he needs to vote for him are Democrats or independent Demo- you know, independents lean Democrat and he so he can't be o- overly political from a Republican perspective until after his reelection. Does it matter these new excuse me RNC rules where it's all going to take place earlier? Let's see, the convention may be in June, and they're going to have far fewer debates. Now I know this is looking down the road, but does that stuff uh, going to have any particular impact on this? Well, it it could. I mean, look, if you're looking at the convention, the one thing that I think is valuable. For the Republicans, particularly, even though it's 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 an open seat in effect, but they're the out party, they're going to be able to spend their their general election funds a lot earlier. If in fact they do go forward with holding an earlier convention, um, and fewer debate, I think, means that it's going to be harder for weak candidates without a a national fundraising base, without a political operation, to vault to the top tier of the pack because they're not going to be able to use these debates for name ID and national recognition in the same way uh, some of the weaker candidates were able to do in 2012. Is Santorum going to run, David? No, he left the option open. Um, I think he's interested. I think, though, if you get a full field of candidates that we consider very strong, I think the opening for him is not going to be the same. However, a guy like Santorum, I could picture... If he decides that there's not a strong social conservative in the mix, mm. he could decide to do it. But, you know, don't forget how hard he worked to go from nothing to something. And he's going to have to ask himself if he wants to go through that again. Larry, what do you make of Chris Christie as a blue state governor from the East? Is he a good weapon to go up against Mrs. Clinton, the presumed Democratic nominee? Yeah, I think he is. I think he's be a very powerful weapon. Um, I agree with everything David has said. You know, I've always felt Christie wins big in November. Right. And then he will be probably the most popular in-demand Republican fundraiser for all of 2014. Which is a lot of favors to to, to call in. It really is. And yeah. it's not only favors, it's the way you build an organization. Right. And he already has a very strong fundraising base here in New York City. Uh, he may have some stuff elsewhere. I know he's got stuff out in California with with Zuckerberg from Facebook, but I think that's a one issue can uh, one issue um, uh, candidate. But I think I, I mean I just think he's going to be very powerful. I just want to say to be mischievous that I am far 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 from certain that Hillary Clinton uh, right, will be right. the Democratic nominee. I understand. Let's far, ask Let's far. ask Mr. Drucker. Mr. Drucker, the word in Washington. Huh. You're the Washington Examiner. You hang out on the Hill. The presumed, presumed candidate is Hillary Clinton uh, uh, so far ahead of the field that and P- the Democrats are not speculating, or are they, David? Look, there are a lot of Democrats that are trying to position themselves in the event that Hillary does not run or that things don't go quite right for right. her. Right. There are plenty of Democrats, most of them, <laughs> that aren't interested in ceding the future to another Clinton presidency. But right now, given her popularity in the party and her popularity really nationwide at the moment, it's hard to make a case that you're going to jump out and challenge her. And when you have a president of your party who is, you know, still rather recently won re-election, it's rare that you're going to get a lot of jockeying where you could start to see factions developing is post-2014, and particularly if Democrats really can't make any inroads, particularly if they happen to lose the Senate, then people start to look ahead to a post-Obama world, and they start to say, what about me? It's my turn. And then maybe you start to see the kind of movement you're just not going to see now. David Drucker of Washington Examiner, Larry Kudlow of Kudlow Reports, Chris Christie of Bruce Springsteen, I'm John Batchelor.